Hi, my name is Christoph Ebert. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services. And I'm going to explain you in this video tutorial about what is Automotive Spice exactly. There's a lot of ideas around about uh, this model. And especially with the recent edition four, we had received from our different clients worldwide always this question. So what is this about? Tell us on a high level before we dive into the details. And that's what I want to do here. So a key question here is always, in which scope are we working? Now, the scope is clearly product liability. We need to deliver product which satisfies the clear claims which we have given. And that means should be, for instance, safe, should be secure, Maybe also in automotive or in medical should be able to be certified. Homologation is what we call it. So there are numbers of standards around and standards bear the content of what is called the best practice. So simply speaking, different standards is what could be expected from engineers and from companies. Now, as you can see in this picture, there are many standards and they somehow relate to each other. But ISO, which is the International Standardization Organization, is smart enough to not repeat content. Rather, they refer to each other. And this is why we put here a standard which is called process maturity on the bottom. It's a foundation for process. And this foundation for process, the ISO 33000, this is what we want to now look more close because it's exactly what ASPICE is all around. That brings us to a brief history of all that. And history goes back quite a long time. We talk here about a time frame of almost 40 years. And it started all out with what was labeled for some time as the software crisis. Software was not delivered in time. It had poor quality. So the US American Department of Defense decided to charge a new organization called Software Engineering Institute with developing a method, a tool to assess the suppliers. And this Software Engineering Institute under the leadership of Ward Humphrey did something very smart. They said, rather than only providing the yardstick, we also want to provide the tools for organization to improve themselves. And that became really the major turning point for the software industry. That was the birth of what initially was the capability maturity model, CMM, and later evolved into an ISO 1554 or SPICE, which software process improvement capability determination, and finally evolved into the ISO 33000. And this ISO 33000 gives a foundation of how to determine a process capability and also see how you can improve yourself. And this was really a major milestone in the whole software industry because organization became more reliable in what they deliver. Aside that, since it is built on the ISO 1227, which is a process lifecycle standard, it also uses a consistent terminology for the whole lifecycle. It's not just requirements or design or test, it's management process, a support process. It's even today hardware process, and that's also important because software runs on hardware. We have to look to the whole system. And what you can see also in the timeline is 23, the move came from SPICE to what is today called version 4, which builds upon 33,000, but brings in some additions like before mentioned hardware model. Now, the whole setup of this ASPICE 4 is in this picture. And you see somewhere in the center, this Software Engineering Process Group, SWE. These are core processes. You see they are V-shaped. Left would be the constructive, right the verification. Verification, that means doing things right. On the top, you have system engineering. That means those things which really bring together the software, the hardware flavor requirements, the analysis, and the integration. Then you have a group which is really related to test, doing the right things. We have a couple of support process, quality assurance, CM, et cetera. 
And we do have also this before mentioned hardware engineering on peer with software engineering. And we also have machine learning, which is more AI centric. And we have some processes which are about process improvement. So all in all, we have here a very nice framework which prescribes some layout for assessing the organization. This yellow and blue stickers this is just a change from ASPICE 3 into ASPICE 4, not something to buffer much, except that you can see the model itself became more rich, more comprehensive with hardware and also getting into the AI domain. Of course, there was also a lot of changes with, cha with um, reducing the previous details so all in all, the model is also now more efficient, more agile. It is structured into what we call capability levels. And this is like us humans, when we learn something, our capability is growing. And more capability means we, we are more mature. We can do things which before we could not do. And what we can see here is at the bottom is incomplete. That means starter level. If we perform something, it's like if you start writing, you can draw some characters. Manage means you're already able to do things in a more repeatable way. Established, you have a full process framework. That means not only the process for the technical part, but also the culture. You have budget, for instance, for improvements. You have feedback loops. A process should be predictable. That is then also relating a process to mer metrics and innovating. That is the continuous improvement. And what we learn is, Organizations with insufficient process are running in walls. Organizations of average, they know where walls are. And those which are really on the top, they know how to build walls for the others to run into. That's a major learning. And this is also showing the business impact of this ASPICE. It's not just about measuring a capability level. It's really about doing your business better and therefore also being competitive in a landscape which is increasingly difficult. Now, ASPICE has this approach to measure and to improve. And the way to do that is we have processes which are always in a very standardized template with a purpose or goals and results. And then there's also this mapping into capability. And that has always two flavors. Process performance, that's the technical part. For instance, if I have requirements, I should specify them maybe in a template. I should also indicate what is the source of requirements, how they link into tests, et cetera. But there's then also a culture dimension, a more generic dimension, which is how do I learn a process? How do I communicate a process? How do I improve a, a process? So this technical and the generic dimensions, this is what makes up the process in an organization. Generic means these ingredients would always be the same across all these process areas. The technical part, that is, of course, different. I mean, the requirements engineering would be different from validation, obviously, which is different from, for instance, more related to how do I design hardware. This is covered by this ISO 33000, and this is also what is mapped into ASPICE. So ASPICE is an instantiation of the ISO 33000 in order to measure or to evaluate a process and improve a process. And that brings me also to a very key notion, which is about how do we achieve change? Because we don't just measure process for the sake of process measurement. That would be in a way, a waste of energy. It might be good to select a supplier, but what really matters is to change, to improve. And what we see here is a typical change process from an initial stage, if you have some pressure, customers who are not happy, markets which are not satisfied, you start a change, and eventually have some result. Now, most of these change processes are lost in the transition. That means they are starting, they might have not enough management attention, not enough budget, not enough leadership, not enough focus. So the result is questionable. What is really relevant is that we have a professional change management that is on the one side pragmatic, should deliver a result tailored towards what you really need and result driven. Whatever we change, we should always have a clear need. Begin with the end in mind is how we call it. And that gives a sustainable improvement rather than this lost in transition. And that means change is certainly not easy. To our experience, having 
worked over the past 20 years in many change projects worldwide in order to ramp up organization. There's one simple statement, which is there's no growth in the comfort zone. I mean, we really have to understand how to start a change and how to use this A-SPICE. And if you want to learn more about the experiences with A-SPICE, don't hesitate contacting us at www.vector.com slash consulting. And that is also where I want to finish for this presentation. I thank you very much for listening in and hope you enjoy your way towards higher maturity. I'm sure it will not only be important for your business, it's also for your own professional engineering, something where you can be proud of because ASPICE is a good collection of industry best practice. It's built upon, as I so showed in this timeline, many, many years of good experiences from other companies. And that is exactly what I want to drive forward with this initial webinar, but also with this overview and to make you successful in a software world, which is increasingly competitive. We should good a success and I'm curious to learn from you and your own improvement projects with ASPICE. Thank you. Mm -hmm.